everyone. Welcome back inside Centura Hall Training Center for another episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones. And coming up on today's episode, it's officially game week here in Denver. The Broncos welcome the Las Vegas Raiders to town this weekend. So for today's episode, we'll hear from head coach Sean Payton, wide receiver Corlin Sutton, and several other players as the team prepares for their season opener. All that and more coming up. It's game week here at Centura Health Training Center. The Broncos open up their season at home this Sunday versus the Las Vegas Raiders. And head coach Sean Payton opened up his press conference today by discussing how he approaches these divisional games. You know, I was asked that question a lot relative to Atlanta, New Orleans. I mean, look, divisional games are important. Um, first goal is to find a way to win your division. You play your divisional opponents twice. Um, I can't speak for rivalries. I, I don't, you know, that I just think that exists a little bit more in the collegiate game. And I think it's, I think division games are, are important. Yes. Plus both wide receiver Cortland Sutton and inside linebacker, Alex Singleton talked today about what it means to open the season versus the Raiders. Yeah. All the, the division games are always close to home. You know, you want to win all of them, but you know, those division games, they hit a little bit closer to, to home and, um, you know, to start the season off at home against the Raiders, there's no way to, no better way to start the season than, you know, to take care of business, uh, you know, against a division opponent at home. We're starting with a AFC West opponent, and so, and we're at home. And, you know, I think to start what we want to show the stuff, I guess we've been talking about, you know, since last year, coming into this year, this offseason and everything else, no better way to start it than having, you know, the Raiders come into town and do it at home. Alex Singleton went on to discuss how this game will set the tone for the rest of the season. Uh, I think kind of last year. It went the exact opposite, and I think that kind of set the tone for the season. And so this year, I think we know exactly what we want to do and what we need to do, and now we just got to go out there and do it. And Cortland Sutton talked about where this offense is at now and how much he's looking forward to seeing head coach Sean Payton's game plan. I think that we've had a really good, you know, off season, a really good training count. Um, you know, the growing pains. You know, certain things that we like, certain things that we needed to work on. I think that we, you know, did a really good job of, um, you know. Manage, managing that over the course of, like I said, the offseason over through training camp. So to be able to go see it, you know, in live action, um, we got to see it a little bit during, um, you know, the, the preseason games. But to go see it in live action when everything counts, it's going to be fun to go watch. This extra day that we got, you know, to be able to see, you know, the early, you know, bits of his, his, his game plan and, and what's, what his, you know, idea is, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to go watch it, you know, come to um, fruition out there, you know, on uh, Sunday. And in other news, cornerback Riley Moss was back at practice today for the first time since suffering a core muscle injury. He said he's getting better day by day and detailed what his rehab process looked like. Um, the biggest thing that they said um, is after, right after you get surgery, you know, you have a day or two of relaxation, but then the biggest thing is making sure that scar tissue doesn't tighten up and then, because it's going to be a lot harder to um, get back on the field. So they were very aggressive with it. Um, and so... You know, this is, like I said, fifth week. Um, so they said four to six. So hopefully, you know, we'll get going here. So He also went on to discuss what it's been like learning this defense and where he feels like he's at right now in that process. It's a blessing in disguise. Obviously, you don't want to get hurt. But, um, you know, you can kind of sit back and, and watch the guys and watch it from a different perspective. Um, and you get a lot of um, knowledge from that. And, and so I did a good job of doing that, um, you know, watching film, understanding the defense a little bit more. Um, which is nice because it's a little bit, you know, less pressure. You know, when you're hurt, you're off the field. You're able to actually, you know, kind of learn the stuff. So The team also announced today that several players changed their jersey numbers. Looking at the active roster, quarterback Traymond Smith will now wear number one. Punter Riley Dixon will wear number nine. Wide receiver Marvin Mims Jr. will wear number 19. Quarterback Fabian Moreau will wear number 23. And quarterback Jaquan McMillan will now wear number 29. And running back Jaleel McLaughlin talked today about why he didn't change his jersey number. You know, I actually didn't. Uh, 38 has a lot of meaning. Um, 38, I actually didn't um, choose that number. But, you know, I, one day I was sitting in the house and I was relaxing. I was like, 38, 38, you know, what about it? And um, actually, it, 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 it has some meaning. Um, I was number 10 in high school. Um, I moved, to, went to Notre Dame College of Ohio, was number 20, and then transferred to Youngstown State. I was number eight, 10 plus 20 plus eight, 38. But I didn't even ask, and I didn't even ask for the number. Um, that, but that just shows that's that's life. That's how uh, that's how you know I'm in the right place. Now joining me here inside the Broncos podcast studio is Broncos lead writer Eric Delala. Eric, thanks for joining me on today's episode. 
It's officially game week. Exciting. The season has started. The season is here. It's exciting. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Me too. I know head coach Sean Payton talked today about the importance of these divisional games. We also heard wide receiver Cortland Sutton, uh, inside linebacker Alex Singleton talk about it. Several guys inside the locker room. Everyone seems really excited to be opening up the season versus the Raiders. Yeah, I think that uh, there's nothing you would rather want than to yeah. go against a divisional rival uh, to do it at home, mm -hmm. to get a chance to set the tone. Obviously, this is a Raiders team that has had a lot of success recently against the Broncos. Right. They've won six consecutive games. Josh Jacobs has had a lot of success. Max yeah. Crosby has had a lot of success. Um, and this is a chance for the Broncos to kind of take a stand here at home, put things, uh, start things off on the right foot, and um, really kind of send a message. And granted, all games are important and Every divisional game is important, but I think the chance to open at home mm -hmm. and get a win and just start things rolling the right way and, and have that positive tone is really important. And Alex Singleton, one of the things that stuck with me that he said was a year ago, it was kind of the opposite, that that loss right. in Seattle set the tone for the season mm -hmm. in a negative way. And here's an opportunity against the Raiders at home to start the season on a positive foot and really send a message for what the rest of the season is going to be like. For sure. And I know it's still early in the week here. So the team does get an extra practice, it being Monday. I know Corlin Sutton, he talked about Sean's game plan and just how excited he is to kind of see what that looks like since it's early on in the week. Yeah, I mean, this something that's going to develop here as the uh, week goes mm -hmm. on. Obviously, you put in the initial game, t game plan, right. third down red zone, those sorts of things as the week goes on. But so that's one of the reasons Sean Payton was brought here. It's not yeah. just his ability as a head coach, but that offensive mind. We've heard so many people say um, how incredible he is from that standpoint. Uh, he talked last week about finding that little edge that can be the difference between winning and losing, right. give you an advantage. Um, certainly, we're excited to see what this looks like. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen it in practice a little bit. We saw it a little bit in the preseason but we don't know what it's going to look like for a whole game and sure. you know who is going to be the guy that, that stands out in week one. Do the Broncos feed the ground game? Do they go to Cortland Sutton a bunch of times? Does Greg Dulcich become that guy that uh, we think he could be? Mm -hmm. All those things are possible ahead of week one, and I think the exciting thing about Sean Payton in this offense is that it could change from week to week, and just because we see something in week one against the Raiders doesn't, that, doesn't mean that's what we're going to see in week two mm -hmm. against the Commanders, and so – yeah, Cortland Sutton, all these guys, they're excited to see what it's going to look like, sure. um, how they're going to attack this Raiders defense. And I think little edge here or there could be the difference. Um, it certainly almost it always is in these NFL games. And Sean Payton, I think, can help give you that edge. Definitely. Eric, you kind of mentioned this. Looking at the receivers room, obviously, there's only four guys on the active roster. And with Jerry Judy dealing with his injury, unsure you know what his status is. Who do you expect really to step up in that room outside of Cortland? Yeah, I mean, well, Cortland is one of the guys right. who's going to have to do it. Uh, I think you then look at Marvin Mims, of course, mm -hmm. a rookie who maybe he thought week one he'd be behind Tim Patrick, he'd be behind yeah. Jerry Judy. Uh, you know, obviously Tim's out for the season. We'll have to see what happens with Jerry. We'll get our first official injury report on Wednesday. He was mm -hmm. out there doing some stretching, some side work, uh, so that's good to see. But, yeah, Marvin Mims is going to be called on uh, to be a part of this offense, and – he showed in that last preseason game his speed, his ability to track the ball down the field. I think that was a big confidence boost for him. Don't think this will be too big of a moment uh, for him. But right. you look at him, you look at Brandon Johnson as a guy that will have to step up as one of the guys on the active roster. I think you're going to have to rely on the running game and on Javante Williams, Samaj P. Ryan in the passing game as kind of those outlet guys, um, maybe steal some yards through the air that way. Greg Dulcich, Adam Troutman. I mean, those are guys that are going to have to contribute, I think, as pass catchers if Jerry Judy can't go. And then you look at the practice squad, right, and maybe you elevate a guy or two there for game day. But mm -hmm. um, I do think Corlin Sutton's going to get a lot of the attention, but he's still going to have to deliver. I think you're going to need a strong performance from Corlin Sutton on Sunday. For sure. Yeah, Eric, on the other side of the ball, we saw that cornerback Riley Moss, he was back at practice today. You know, he said he's getting better, feels good, you know, kind of on a day-by-day -day basis. Don't know his status yet. As you mentioned, we don't have the official injury report, but seems like he's heading in the trending in the right direction. Yeah, good to see uh, yeah. Riley Moss out there. First time he's really practiced mm -hmm. since he had that core muscle repair. Um, Riley's a guy that we weren't sure. Was he going to go on short-term IR? Is he right. going to stay on the active roster? Obviously, they, they let him stay on the active roster. To see him back out at practice is an encouraging sign. Mm -hmm. I'll have to see how long it takes him to get up to speed. Um, you know, I'm not sure what his status will be this weekend against the Raiders, but certainly 
positive sign, like you said, that he's out there. It's been about five weeks since that surgery. They talked about four to six weeks kind of as that recovery range. Um, so hopefully we're getting close there. But yeah. this is a guy that Broncos felt very strongly about when they drafted him, obviously moved up mm -hmm. to get him uh, and sent a future pick in order to go get Riley Moss. It's a guy that I think can contribute, certainly on special teams right away. Uh, sure. a good reserve defender that if he's pressed into action, I think would be very capable. So we'll have to see kind of how they get him in there, but really good news and a good sign that he's working in the right direction. And I would imagine we'd see him sooner rather than later if he's already back out at practice. The secondary, I mean, they've got a lot of depth back there. They do, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about a bunch of guys that made this roster, right? right? And it's going to be a competition to see who gets a jersey on game day because everybody can't be active. and. Right. Um, everybody can't get as many snaps as they probably would like. Mm -hmm. Pat Sertan's going to get as many snaps as he'd like. Obviously. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's a very deep secondary, a lot of depth there. Right. Um, Sang Bassey, uh, Jaquan McMillian. I mean, there's a lot of good guys there that uh, are going to see the field, we imagine, and excited to see how it all pans out. Won't be easy to throw on these guys. Yeah, definitely. Last but certainly not least, Eric, five players on the active roster changed their jersey numbers today, kind of went over who that was earlier in the show, but nice change right before the start of the season, I guess. Yeah, it was uh, nice to see. I know um, Marvin Mims wanted something a little smaller. He said yeah. didn't like the, the 83. I thought it looked good on him, but he, I didn't, did too. he didn't like it, I guess. Um, one guy who didn't change his number said mm -hmm. Julio McLaughlin. I thought that yeah. was a nice story that his, his high school numbers and college number added up to 38, 30, kind 38. of. That's, uh, you know, a mix of everything that brought him to this point. Yeah, that it was, was meant to be. Kind of a nice moment. It was, for sure. Well, excited to get the week going here, Eric. There will not be practice on Tuesday, but the guys will be back out there on Wednesday. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for coming on the show. You got it, Sid. And Broncos fans, don't forget, Paramount Plus is your streaming home to catch every local NFL on CBS game this season. Visit ParamountPlus.com to start your free trial and stream Russell Wilson and the team as they battle the league's best. Plus, get an all-access pass to 24-7 NFL content with CBS Sports HQ, Fantasy Football Today, NFL Slime Time, and more. And this year, Paramount Plus is your streaming destination for Super Bowl 58. Another action-packed Broncos season with the NFL on CBS awaits, so stream Paramount Plus from any device all season long. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network in YouTube tomorrow for another episode. See you all then.